My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will make another example of enemy and this time I want to show you how to make an enemy that has multiple sprites. So we'll do one with two sprites, um, one for the body and one for his weapon, which will be a sword uh, for this example. And what we want is um, to customize uh, what happens when um, the hero t touches the sword of the enemy but not the body. So how do we do that? Um, first for this example I will import from Solaris free resource pack two enemy sprites that comes from Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX. Uh, this B guard which is uh, not uh, a new sprite done by New Link for, for that project um, in Zelda Link to the Past style. Import. So I'm importing a PNG file and two sprites, B guard and B guard weapon. So let's see. Uh, so the PNG file is uh, like this. It contains the yeah, the pictures for our two sprites, one for the body and one for the sword. This is the body, B guard, and this is the, the sword, B guard weapon. Okay, so how to make an enemy that will have both of these? So, um, first we need to create the, the new enemy model. Uh, B, oops, file name is B guard. So it has to be the same name, preferably as the main sprite. Okay, um, and let's create one instance of this enemy here, be guard, and that's it. And we can make it look uh, this direction here. Okay, uh, so our default script does that. In particular, it creates only one sprite, which is usually okay for normal enemies. But here we will create a second one. Um, let's don't make any movement yet, just to better see what, what will happen. Um, so this variable sprite, I will replace it by two variables body sprite and weapon sprite. So this one will be body sprite and the other one will be weapon sprite. Um, so here we need to concatenate the same thing but underscore weapon at the end because it is just how our sprite is named here. So we could hard code the full name like this. It will be exactly equivalent because enemy get breed is indeed B guard. Um, but I like to avoid hard coding enemy model names in their own scripts because we never know. Maybe one day we will rename this uh, to something else and uh, we we will probably forget to update the strings here if we rename the model and the sprite, for example. And also, if you create multiple enemy models that have similar behavior, uh, like this with one body sprite and one weapon sprite, we, you will be able to have just this code that works for uh, no matter wh what is the the current exact model name of the enemy. Um, so you, you will be able to just reuse these lines either by duplicating them to, to other, in other enemy scripts or better uh, to make a separate file that, that all your similar enemies will be able to, to call. Um, but that's a bit off topic for this tutorial. For now let's just create our two sprites and see what happens. Yeah, so this time we also have the sword. 
okay so we I will put three life points um, and so nothing special happens yet we just have two sprites but they have the same behavior I can hurt the the enemy on the body or on the sword so collisions are pixel perfect on on both both sprites and same I can be hurt by the by the sword and by the body okay uh, and in this tutorial we want to customize what happens when the hero hits the sword of the enemy um, but first let's see how to customize what happens uh, when we just hit the enemy uh, no matter it's which on which sprite and later we will do the same but sprite sprite by sprite so we have this function here enemy set attack consequence that defines what happens when the hero gives some damage to the enemy more exactly when the enemy receives an attack because it can it can just ignore completely the attack um, Okay, so enemy set attack consequence. So first, which attack we want to customize? Uh, it will be the sword attack. So here I can I I, I can put one of these attack names, uh, which are the supported built-in attacks by the engine. Only the first two are probably useful, maybe explosion, but the rest is more um, legacy attacks um, that we would nowadays re-implement completely in Lua, but uh, that wasn't that used to to be less custom customizable. And uh, back in the days, we we only had these attacks, but we will probably just ignore all these ones. You, I don't think you will need them, but maybe sword and throne item. So let's customize what happens when the enemy is hit by the sword of the hero. Um, if we put one here, it will mean that the enemy loses one life point, which is actually exactly what happens by default, so that doesn't change anything. Um, I can change the number here. I can say, for example, three life points. And then uh, the enemy dies immediately because it it only had three life points. Uh, so you get the idea, and so that's the first possibility. You can put a number here, or you can put one of these strings: ignored, protected, immobilized, or completely customize what happens. And this is the most interesting thing to do, probably. Um, let's see, for example, protected. Protected means like the enemy is using its shield to block the attack. Or ignored. This will just do absolutely nothing. Protected, it did play a small sound, I hope you heard, but ignored, nothing happens. And um, yeah, all of this applies to what happens when the hero attacks the enemy not the other way uh, when the enemy attacks the hero um, it's also possible to customize it but uh, we will not cover this in in this particular tutorial but you can ask on discord um okay and the first parameter again is the the attack the which attack is received by the the enemy so you can say for example thrown item it will mean that when we throw an item, so that means, for example, a, a stone, something that we can lift. Uh, let's let's create a destructible item with the sprite stone. And if I throw the, this stone, nothing will happen at all. The the stone even uh, gets past the enemy. 
it's not even destroyed because we set here to ignored we could say protected then the stone would break on the enemy like let's say he has a good shield or again we can put some number of life points here okay and that means you can have different reactions for different attacks. You can say that the sword inflicts one life point and the thrown item inflicts three life points. I don't have to restart the whole game all the time, but maybe just the map. Um, yeah, let's start with the, the sword. So I needed uh, three hits, but only one with the stone. So we can customize that uh, attack by attack, but more interestingly, also sprite by sprite. And that's what, that's what I was talking about in the first place for this tutorial. So how do you do that? There is the same function, but uh, underscore sprite. And there is an additional first parameter, which is which sprite do you want to customize? Uh, let's say we don't want to change anything on the body sprite, but just uh, make the the uh, sword of the enemy protected. So this time, if I hit the sword, it will just make this small sound, but the enemy will not be hurt. And if I hit the body, it will still be hurt normally. Um, one thing to note is that here I only customized the the um, the sword attack of the hero, so I I didn't uh, mention anything about the other attacks. If you want the thrown items not to um, hurt the enemy when the thorn item touches uh, the weapon of the enemy then you also want you will also need to customize thrown oops item maybe something like protected so as you prefer and now i want to make something slightly more interesting uh, I, I want the enemy to be pushed back when we hit his sword. Um, so let's say the, the hero is here. He hits the sword of the enemy and we want the enemy to be pushed back in the same direction here, in the same angle. So that means we don't want to put any of these, but we want to define a function which will just customize what happens when that sprite is, is hit by the sword of the hero. And what we want to happen is, well, as I just said, we want to create a, a movement. Uh, so that movement that create. So we already have a movement variable here. Straight movement so which angle as i was saying um the hero is here the enemy is here we want to continue in the same direction so that would be the angle from the hero to the enemy so we can just do hero get angle to enemy um so you could do the computation yourself, but there is this handy function that does it for you based on the coordinates of both entities. Semicolon here. Uh, speed. Let's say 96. And let's stop the movement after some distance, like 32 pixels. And that's pretty much it. Let's start the movement on our enemy. 
Um, wait, I also want to play some sound. Uh, sword tapping. This will actually be the same sound as the one we had before when we used uh, the protected mode here. Okay, nothing is happening. Ah, oh, okay, it works. But as you probably heard, um, we are hearing the sound multiple times because since the enemy is not in a hurt state, it's just yeah, yeah. We just created a movement, but um, what what we do here is still active, and it, it actually happens repeatedly. Um, if the if both swords are still hitting each other for for a few frames, so what we want to do is probably to store the state of the enemy. Uh, we have two states: the normal state and the state uh, being pushed. It's, it will be a boolean because we only have two states, like we did in a previous tutorial. So initially, it will be false. Um, And here we will set it to true. Being pushed is true. And we do all that only if we are not already being pushed. Let's say if being pushed, then we just return to avoid extra indentation. If being pushed, we do nothing. We set being pushed to true. And when the movement is finished, which means when 32 pixels are covered, we set being pushed to false again. And that should work. Yeah, good. And the only strange thing is that we did not define anything at all when when we are in normal state. Um, because I, I initially removed what we had there just to better see uh, when we hit the sword or the body. But let's put uh, back some usual code like uh, go towards the hero like this. Target movement movement like, like we saw in previous tutorials. And maybe you can guess what I did wrong here. Well, two things. First, the sprite is not uh, updating its direction based on, on the movement, but we'll, we'll fix that. But also, if I hit the guard when the being pushed state is finished well we are not uh, the, the 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 enemy is not moving anymore because this is not called again so we should just restart the enemy just like after when the enemy is hurt so for this we can we can call enemy restart which does uh, stop any timers um, of the enemy. But here there are no timers, so we don't really care, but... And it also calls this, which is the important part. So maybe we could actually simplify a little bit and say here, being pushed is false. I mean, I don't know if it really simplifies the, the code, but I like it. I like making, make, putting this here because it will also be reset to false when um, the enemy was being hurt. Okay, so this seems to work quite well, uh, except that it is going a bit too fast. 
let's say 32. Um, and finally, we need to set the direction of the sprite like in previous tutorials, based on the direction of the movement. And actually, this is only true in, in the normal state, but not in the being pushed state, as you can see. Oops. <laughs> That's funny, I made the same mistake in the French tutorial a few minutes ago. Yeah, we don't have any variable called sprite, because in this tutorial we have two sprites and they are called like this. So body sprite and sword sprite. And a good practice, instead of calling get direction for twice, we can just store its result and just use it here twice. But what I wanted to show you was not this mistake. Oh, something is still wrong. Yes, it's not called sword sprite, but weapon sprite. Okay, so now the enemy is indeed uh, looking to the same direction as uh, its movement, but that's completely strange when we <laughs> when we push him back. We would like to, well, like like when he's hurt. Actually, we would like him to to stay in in the same direction. So this code here should not happen when we are in. Uh, being pushed state. So let's say if not being pushed, then this. And now we should be good. And 32 is a bit slow. <laughs> let's say 48. Okay. That's looking better. So we, we almost reproduced the same movement as um, what happens we, when we uh, hurt the enemy. Um, okay, so I guess that's it for this tutorial. Um, again, one important thing is to store explicitly um, the current state of your enemy. Otherwise you will have a lot of bugs like uh, things uh, being called repeatedly or some code that should only apply in some state but not on other states. Um, so that will really help you. Storing the state here. So here it's a simple, still quite a simple enemy because it has only two states. So I stored it as a boolean. But if you have more, probably you want to store um, maybe a string or something that has more value than a, bo a boolean. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for this tutorial. So we saw how to customize um, what happens when the enemy is hit by the hero on different sprites. And just for information, if you want to do the opposite, uh, which means customizing what happens when the hero is attacked by the enemy. There is this event here, this event here on attacking hero um, that we will maybe cover later. Um, we will also at some point make a tutorial, um, a, a big example to, of how to create a boss. But actually it, it's just I mean, a boss is just a normal enemy, as far as Solaris is concerned. It's just that you will probably use uh, larger sprites and <laughs> put more life points here <laughs> and more damage and more states and more attacks, more timers. But uh, apart from that, is there, there is no uh, difference from the point of view of the engine between a normal enemy and a boss. Um, okay, and yeah, boss often have multiple sprites, of course. Sometimes even more than two. And sometimes they are also 
composed of multiple uh, enemies even that's that's also possible like we saw um for example at some point we in in a previous tutorial we made uh, an enemy that was shooting some flames so that was actually uh, already an example of using two enemies um okay so i guess that's it uh, feel free to join our discord if you have any question or if you want more details about how to customize your enemies and see you next time thank you very much that's all for now